Well, there doesn't seem to be any change to the employment status of Boise State Professor Scott Yenner. The reaction to his comments made about women in the workplace or even in college has also continued in a steady stream. Social media threads, open letters, op-ed pieces in local papers. Quick refresh. Last month, Dr. Yenner spoke at a national conservatism conference in Orlando and said things like, our independent women seek their purpose in life in mid-level bureaucratic jobs and they are more medicated, meddlesome, and quarrelsome than women need to be. And more successful men will mean more happy citizenry and a stronger nation. 15 minutes of thoughts like that. Basically, he believes women have been more damaged by wanting to have a career in lieu of or in addition to a family. As we said, reaction has been swift and widespread from across the country, from the community, and from his colleagues. Yesterday, we heard from a colleague of Dr. Yenner's, a woman, Dr. Joanne Lighty, who graduated with a chemical engineering degree in 1982 and is now the dean of the College of Engineering at Boise State University. And oh, she also happens to be a wife and a mother. Well, today we're narrowing our focus a bit to a colleague within the political science department. Dr. Steven Udick has been at Boise State since 2015. He earned his tenure last year, which is why he says he felt safe enough to say something about Dr. Yenner's comments on social media. He began a thread with the words, it's probably beyond time for me to talk about my colleague, Scott Yenner. He called Yenner's comments hateful, offensive, and unsurprising. And he would support the university investigating and bringing some sort of disciplinary action against the tenured professor. If we want a great nation, we should be preparing young women to become mothers, not finding every reason for young women to delay motherhood until they are established in a career or sufficiently independent. It's a thing of, is it just your words or it, does that influence your behaviors, right? Every effort must be, must be made not to recruit women into engineering, but rather to recruit and demand more of men who become engineers. Ditto for med school and the law and every trade. You know, you can make those connections there that maybe this is influencing his behavior, right? If you don't think they should be in the workforce, why would you think they should be in college, right? Do you think that's the situation with uh, Dr. Yenner right now? Do you think his opinions and what he says has influenced his behavior? You know, I don't know for sure. I've certainly heard things uh, from students and things like that where, you know, you hear rumors and you hear things from people you know, and you hear them and you think, Maybe, yeah. When you say you've heard things, like what? I've, I've heard things from that people have noticed that they seem that women are treated differently in his class, right? I've heard suggestions that, you know, small things but still kind of offensive things, like he calls women sweetie in class and things like that, right? How long have you heard these <sighs> stories? Years. So why speak out now? Um, speak out now because I'm in a position where, you know, there's not gonna be a lot of consequences for me in saying something. We need a university and a, and a culture here at Boise State where everyone feels welcome. Um, you know, we're in a situation where I don't want any faculty members' comments to make certain groups of people, whether it's women, people of color, um, people based on their religion, sexual orientation, anything like that, to feel uncomfortable attending school here because that's not the type of place where I'd want to work, that's not a community I'd want to be a part of, is one that's not inclusive. When there are faculty members saying these things, it can damage a lot of that work, really good work that's being done by university administration to try to get a more diverse and inclusive campus. Why do you think what Dr. Yenner says uh, should be treated as more than just words, more than just opinions? I, I think because he's in a position of authority over the group that he's talking about, right? He is teaching courses with women who want to go into the workforce and they want to be successful in their careers. He's in a position of power. Yeah, he's absolutely in a position of power. He's not just in a position of power over women who are students. He's a tenured faculty member and we have women on our faculty who aren't tenured. And, you know, by default, he's in a position of power over them too. And it's kind of like looking through this again, these are women with successful, strong careers. And he's saying these things, right? And the question becomes, how can he evaluate people who work for the university, right? Or how can he evaluate his students fairly when he believes that? These are all very good questions. And something else Dr. Yudick said during our discussion today stood out to me. He said, I can't imagine what it would be like to be a student in his class as a young woman or a woman of any age. And neither could we. 
until we spoke with one of those women. Kristen Jackson works for Boise State Public Radio. In fact, she's worked for the university since 2004. But back in 2009, she was also working toward her political science degree at the school. Now, having a full time job and going to school at the same time meant she had to take classes at night. And one of those was a required course that was taught by Dr. Yenner. She knew it was going to be a tough class. She'd heard his reputation, and she says she's learned a lot about political theory in that class. But other than that, Kristen says she can't really say anything else nice about it. And what's come out this week, she says, doesn't shock her. He was just awful to, as a professor. I remember the very first day of class, and he went around the room, and he purposely called all the women Ms. whatever, and he'd pick a last name, but he wouldn't say your last name. So my last name's Jackson. So instead of calling me Ms. Jackson, he would call me Miss Johnson. And if I corrected him, he would tell me it didn't matter because it wasn't really my last name anyway. It was my husband's. Okay. Some students have reported, like, he referred to the uh, women in the class as sweetie sometimes. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yep. Sweetie, honey. Mm-hmm. Dear, wow. mm -hmm. but never any sort of terms of endearment, as they say, for a man. No, the men were always called by their first name. Always. In that same first class, he said, anyone who works full time, raise your hand. So it was a night class. Almost everybody raised their hand. And he said, you're all going to fail. So, OK, he said, now tell me who has kids. And everyone raised their hands. And he said, now, if you're the dad, put your hand down. And the boy, men all put their hands down. He goes, the rest of you, you're going to fail this class. Why? Why did he say that? Because the class was so rigorous that you couldn't possibly be a mother and pass the class. And then those were his exact words. But he didn't feel the same way about guys, dads no, who were taking no, the class. No, the dads did not matter because it's not the dad's job to raise the children. It's the mom's job to raise the children. I mean, he made it very clear even back then that women's place was not at a university, especially if you're a mother. How'd that make you feel? made me feel terrible. Being a mother is really important to me. It's something that I always wanted to be, but that doesn't mean I don't get to be other things. I'm also a very successful professional woman. I have two college degrees. I pride myself on that, but I also pride myself on being a good mother. I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Did you file a complaint? I mean, was it bad enough for you to say, this is a problem I need to tell somebody? I didn't, but I was a kid. I was young. I didn't know who I would go to. I, I complained to my advisor, um, but you know, he didn't know what to do either. He told me it wasn't right, but he can't control a tenured staff member. There's nothing he could do. What did you end up getting in the class? I got a C, which is a very low grade for me. Did you feel like you earned that C? Oh, I felt like I worked harder for a C than I've ever worked for an A in my life. A lot of people say he does give a tough class. He grades harshly for everybody, or did you feel like you working hard for a C, somebody putting the same effort who happened to be male would get a higher grade. Oh yeah, I'm, I can pretty much guarantee. I know when he would hand papers back, you'd look over at the person next to you who never takes part in class, who never has anything to say when he's asking questions and we're supposed to be talking and they get a B on their paper and I get a D. What are the odds that they really wrote that good of a paper? Working for the university as an alum though, how do you feel like something like this should be handled? I mean, this is obviously a pattern. It's obviously a pattern. I could see if this was a one-time thing, them taking the tack that they are, but this is not a one-time thing. And he is directly attacking half of the student body at Boise State. How can they keep somebody there who honestly and truly believes that women don't belong there? How can our female president want somebody working for her that doesn't think she should be in the role she's in? And I will tell you, we got a very, very pathetic email from the university about how they support women. Is that yeah. the same one they posted on their social media pages? As, as a woman, that felt like an attack on me. Why is that? Well, because they're not really supporting us. They, they, they aren't supporting the women at the university. If they were, they'd be taking action. Maybe they can't fire him, but he needs to be disciplined. Something needs to be done to make it clear that this isn't an acceptable way for people at the university to behave. We have values statements that we are agreed to, but to be employees there. And it seems like he's not being held to the same standard that literally everyone else is being held to. Kristen says she thought about dropping the class back in 2009, but it was the only time that she could take it and work toward her degree. As for bringing it to the school's attention, she says she's not sure if any others have, 
but she certainly had conversations about being in Dr. Yenner's class with other women, and they've shared the same experiences. Dr. Udick told us he has confidence in his department that it is being looked into and will be handled appropriately. But from the school standing, while well, they're standing by their free speech policy that they put out there earlier this week. But when asked if there was an investigation into Dr. Yenner or any complaints against him based on what we've heard over the last couple of days, Boise State takes allegations of policy violations seriously and investigates them under the appropriate policy, we were told. The university will not comment on personnel matters, which means we may not know if any action is taken, any disciplinary action taken against Dr. Yenner, short of a removal. And once again, we did reach out to Dr. Yenner today to see if he would like to respond to any of these reactions. But we, we have yet to hear back from him. We even stopped by his office. He wasn't in today. But consider this an open invitation for Dr. Yenner to respond and we'll listen. But just listening to what Kristen had to say this afternoon about a class she took back in 2009 about women being referred to as sweetie and dear and hun in class, in a university class, I had to tell her it was uncomfortable for me to even hear that. It was angering a bit. So sure, we can imagine how it must have felt, according to Dr. Udick, but unless we actually lived it as a woman, we'll never really know.